and welcome back to ESO Live. We are back from a short break after launching Thieves Guild on all the platforms. It was busy. <laughs> so we're glad to be back. Thank you for joining us. We have a great show lined up for you today. Um, I am Jessica Folsom. I'm Gina Bruno. And we are your English community managers for the Elder Scrolls Online. So we'd like to hop right in to show you what we've got lined up for today's show. So first up, we're going to go over some official ESO news. Um, after that, we'll get into our Ask Us Anything segment. And we might have a guest for that. <laughs> and uh, throughout the show, we're actually going to have QA lead analyst Kyle Harris playing on the Xbox One North American Mega Server live um, throughout. And uh, you might be able to find him. He's going to be running around Abba's Landing in Hughes And as always, we'll have a nice little giveaway sometime during the show. So as you can see, we've got Kyle here, talking to Quinn, getting started. He will be playing throughout the show, and um, yeah, see if you can find him. And also Rich Lambert, our creative director, has joined us oh, yeah, today. I'm You're hiding. <laughs> oh, yeah, this guy. <laughs> lurking in the background. <laughs> um, so yeah, as Jess said, Kyle will be playing throughout the show um, on Xbox North American <laughs> Mega Server. Mm -hmm. So you should try and find him. And I don't know. Be nice. Do, do whatever. <laughs> Give as long as you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Rich will be on the show with us for the duration, just kind of as we go through everything. Um, so to kind of kick things off, we're going to get straight into some of the official news mm -hmm. um, from the past couple weeks. So first off, um, as we mentioned, all platforms now have Thieves Guild available. So if you haven't picked it up, um, feel free. There's also a lot of great live streams that you can tune into where people are showing off uh, Thieves Guild content on all the platforms, PS4, Xbox One, PC. I don't know if we have any Mac. I don't think I've seen any. So at least the first three. At least. Um, so our next incremental patch for PC and Mac is actually happening next Tuesday, not Monday. Different than we usually do it. Uh, this will be 2.3.8. And this is just a one-time change. Uh, we posted about it on the forums a couple hours ago. It's. Um, for everybody who may have the day off for Easter Monday, uh, we didn't want to take the servers offline while you have the day off. We'd rather have you play. So we just kind of shifted maintenance over one day. So enjoy your Monday playing ESO. Did you know that they also call Easter Monday Dingus Day? What? <laughs> really? Yeah. I think it's, <laughs> it's, a Polish, it's a Polish holiday. OK, I was going to ask, where, where does that happen? OK. <laughs> Um, also, There's another name for it, but I don't know if you can say what it is. You can look it up. Also, we often get questions about when are we going to have a sale on ESO and Crown Packs, and there's actually sales happening right now for all platforms. So um, for Microsoft, there's a sale going on that ends on March 28th. Um, Sony North America, also March 28th is when it ends. It's going on now. And then um, a Sony Europe sale is going on until April 4th. So if you're looking to get some crown packs for a little cheaper or the game or you have a friend who would like to join um, there's discounts across the board indeed there are so um let's get right into um some of our game updates um we kind of wanted to pull some of the more common discussions that we've been seeing on the forums over the past week or so and just sort of give you an update on what's going on whether it's a bug or a question or what have you so this isn't ask us anything this is just kind of we just some wanted of the to hot address topics something. that we've seen yeah. the precursor to precursor to <laughs> uh so the first thing um probably what everybody kind of is waiting to hear about is serial performance um, we, we know that nothing went into the last PC incremental, that was 2.3.7, what's currently live, uh, but that doesn't mean that we're not doing anything about it. We are actively working on a bunch of stuff internally that we just haven't um, been ready to push out yet. But in general, <coughs> as soon as these are ready, we will push them out into an incremental patch. We're not going to wait until the next major update, mm -hmm. for example. Basically, um, as soon as they're tested and ready. Exactly. Yeah, we, we have a few that are that are in the pipe right now. There's a few that are coming. Not this one, but the next one. Um, next that will that will help. Next incremental. Yeah, the next mm -hmm. incremental that will help. Uh, they won't be the silver bullets, um, but it's it's again it's the layer thing. Um, we have a really big one that we're working on right now, that deals with how we manage and sort big lists of things, mm. um, and target sets and whatnot. 
um, but that's a really big one, like I said, and so we want to make sure that it's tested and, and works um, before we push it out. We don't want to make things worse. And that we, is good. I was going to say, we, we have put in a few fixes so far, yeah. and although they've been small, um, we can see just through our data metrics that it is making a small difference. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we definitely want to fix this as much as you guys do, so we are yes. working on it. So FPS issues are another one that we've seen complaints about um, on all platforms, so PC, Xbox, uh, PS4, Mac, and it is something that we're aware of. We pushed some fixes for the PC and Mac um, client, I want to say a week or two ago, mm -hmm. that helped with some of the main FPS uh, issues. And we actually are aware and we're digging into a few others uh, with our engineers. Um, we plan to make some small improvements over the next few incremental patches and we will continue monitoring from there. We're actually tracking down one specifically on console yes. right now. Yep. So the next thing <clears throat> is uh, charge abilities, like toppling charge, critical charge. Um, there's some issues with them, frankly, where they just don't work when you press the button. And that's certainly not intended. It, it, especially, <laughs> especially on uneven terrain. You know, they work pretty well when uh, you know, it's it's easy for the server to draw the path mm -hmm. to there, but as soon as we start getting into the uneven terrain, uh, it starts to break down. So w we want to fix those. Um, so um, one one of the things that we've been talking about in terms of fixing them is making them more like teleports instead of charges. Right. Uh, so that's something that we're kind of actively looking at, and that should help a lot with a lot of these issues with these abilities. Okay, uh, radiant destruction. <laughs> so this is one we've seen a lot of polarized discussion about, especially on the official forum. Some people are really happy with it. Other people are like, oh my gosh, it's way too powerful. J-beam. Yep. Um, so we, we know it's strong. Um, we've been looking at all the metrics. Uh, we're actually really happy with where it's at. It is a, an execute, and, and when paired with certain synergies and passives, it is really strong. Um, but it's not over, overly strong, we feel. Yeah, like you said, it's an execute. It's supposed to hurt. There's mm -hmm. other executes in game they hurt. There's other abilities uh, outside of that that are not executes that, that hurt as well. You know, Crystal Frags is another really good example, right? right? Mm -hmm. Where that one, you know, you get popped with one of those, it, it, it definitely hurts. You feel so. it. <laughs> uh, the next one is the new PvP vendor that we put into Cyrodiil, uh, the one that kind of sells the, the special items. Um, we've seen some people just kind of explain that they have been <laughs> unhappy in general with some of the traits that are offered, um, not quite as desirable as they wish. Especially for PvP. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Um, so we, we've we definitely been reading your feedback on that. I don't know if we have any changes that are upcoming or going in. Uh, so what, what are the things we're looking at? And, and I guess before I touch on that, w w the idea behind this vendor was not that it was always going to be best in slot gear. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to kind of rotate through, you know, we're rotating through the gear. We wanted to kind of rotate through the, the traits as well. Um, but I think what we'll probably end up doing is just if you purchase it for AP, you know, you'll be able to get the impenetrable version. Mm -hmm. And if you purchase it for gold, you'll get the infused version. And I think that will probably satisfy That's kind nice of the parody, best of both yeah. worlds. Okay. Um, we also have had some random audio issues since they've guilt launch. So that's everything from <laughs> poor Casey's. <laughs> Shaking yes. his fist. Casey, Casey personally has been working on these for a couple weeks now. Um, you might have seen him on the forums asking for videos and asking for more details. Um, so these issues are anything from you hear static when you're playing to the sound cuts out to a little bit more rarely just an unusual sound will play when you do a certain action, things that don't match up. So we are working on tracking these down and getting them fixed. Um, it has been a little tricky, so if you have any additional details, we would be happy to have them. Just look, uh, post them on the official forums. Um, one of the other things that we've seen, um, I don't want to say frequently because it actually doesn't affect everybody, but it does affect a number of people, mm -hmm. is the bug where you can't revive using the soul gems. Mm -hmm. um, you press the button and nothing happens. Um, so uh, we are testing a fix for it. Hopefully it will be in next week's PC incremental patch um, and hopefully in the next console incremental, which will be later on in April. Um, unfortunately, this isn't something that we can hotfix. Otherwise, we totally, totally would. would. Yep. <laughs> Um, next one is a bug with streak. So there's currently a camera bug with streak where you use streak and the camera kind of detaches and stays in place while your character shoots off in one direction. It's 
kind of funny and kind of annoying. Um, we are, <laughs> we you are the aware of it. the latter than the former, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are aware. Well, it's, it's annoying if it's happening to you. Um, right. We're aware of it, and uh, we are actively working on a fix. So as soon as we have a fix, we'll push it, and you'll see it in the patch notes. And the last thing is uh, the bug with rapid regen, where you can just spam the hell out of it. Um, <laughs> Definitely not an intended change, and we are currently testing a fix for that one, too, so that'll be in a future incremental patch. So that wraps up um, our, our hot issues, our top issues, but please understand that isn't all of them. We are currently looking into things like the, the Phoenix set, mm -hmm. um, the Mundus Stone multiple buffs. So there are a lot more things we're looking into. And that mu multiple Mundus Stone mm -hmm. buff, I'm pretty sure, is going to go into Monday's Into the next incremental. Or, uh, it is. Tuesday's yeah. incremental, I'm sorry. Yes. Yep. So... There are more. That wasn't everything. Um, but that is everything we've got for today. And I think let's do a giveaway. We should do a giveaway. Before we get into the Ask Us Anything. <laughs> when we watch Kyle play. Yeah. Kyle, you can do it. Uh, let's see. So we're going to give away a random <coughs> mystery t-shirt. ESO t-shirt. Mystery t-shirt. But it'll be a mystery. It's a mystery because we only have certain sizes and certain styles in stock. So, um, whatever, uh, whatever your size is, we'll kind of work it out with mm -hmm. you. What we can get. Um, so, Kai, do you have the thing available? It's broken. Okay, it's broken. Well, okay. We can, we can still do it. Yeah, we do something else. We will still do it. Um, <coughs> so, if you would like to try and win this T-shirt, what should the keyword be? What do you think, Kyle? Kyle. T-shirt. Should it just be Kyle? <laughs> just be Kyle? Just Kyle, do it. Go. If you want to try and win a T-shirt, an ESO T-shirt, just type in Kyle. <laughs> Maybe we should... Never mind. See if we can figure out how to spell his name, too. It's not I too, mean, it's it's not too complicated. <laughs> if you were paying attention, it was on the screen earlier. Oh, oh. I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. There's the first Kyle. Oh, now they're all coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So Kyle, you've got some great Doom, Fallout. Yeah. It's awesome. You're really representing today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Where did you get that hat? Uh, you know, got some. It's got connections. Inside connections. You need to give me I'm an, em an employee of the Zenimax family. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So should we pick somebody? Was that a yes? Like I should pick somebody? <laughs> okay. Doing it live, you guys. Well, I, I see the name. Duke Umber. Congratulations. Duke Umber. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Congrats. Um, Kai will be in touch with you on Twitch chat and get your size and t shirt preference. We can kind of go over what we have available for you. It might be like an Alliance t shirt or maybe an ESO branded t shirt. Mm -hmm. we'll, go dig, way, we'll go digging through our closet for you. We will. <laughs> Next up, we have our Ask Us Anything, um, where we will go over some of your questions from the official forums. These were things that we we tried to grab questions that were particularly relevant to discussions that are going on right now. So I know in the past we've seen feedback where players have said, well, why did you choose that question? It's old, or it's a softball question, or it's a lore question. So we have taken that to heart. <coughs> we had to, tried to choose things that are a little more, a little more relevant to the discussions that are going on right now. And just to be clear, this comes directly from the Ask Us Anything thread that yes. is sticky in general discussion. It's not like we're you know, searching through Taking other, other questions, other questions in other forum threads. It's specifically in that one. Mm -hmm. So if you have a question that you'd like us to answer in this segment, um, it's sticky at the top of general discussion. You'll find it right there. You can just add to it. We are always looking for more to grab mm. from. All right. So first question um, from, well... <laughs> Carol there you go. That sounds right. We'll go with you that. You said it better than I would have. <laughs> um, do you believe it would be prudent to slow down the ambitious DLC release schedule, which is currently one release per quarter, uh, to ensure that what is actually released on the live servers is as close to being bug-free as reasonably possible? That is a great question, mm -hmm. and I am going to toss it over to Rich. <laughs> Rich! <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. It's it's a great question, and it's it's definitely something that I've had to think about over the past couple updates. You know, Thieves Guild was a little bit bumpy, um, especially on PC, you know, mm -hmm. we released with a couple of crashes, which we fixed within, you know, 48 hours. Um, but still, there were some crashes. We have some frame rate issues. We have the audio issues. So, so yeah, there's there's some big things there. And 
you know, no excuses, but we did some major, major, major changes to the way the engine works, you know, so with the DirectX 11 mm -hmm. and the 64-bit client. And we didn't, we didn't make those decisions lightly. Um, you know, they help or will help uh, with the overall improvement uh, in performance of the client mm -hmm. and allow us to do some uh, pretty cool things in the future. Uh, you know, at this point, you know, DirectX 9, I think, is 15 years old. Wow. And Microsoft generally only supports the latest and greatest, mm -hmm. and so we kind of had to make that, that tough decision to, to go ahead and bite the bullet and do it. Um, you know, that, that being said, uh, I don't foresee us doing something as big as, you know, DirectX 11 and uh, the 64-bit client at the same time again. Right. So in that sense, probably going to slow down a little bit. Um, we, we still want to keep updating the game though, right? You know, and our focus needs to be on, uh, you know, fixing bugs, you know, polishing systems and adding new content. And the 64-bit client was important to, uh, well, for a number of reasons, but didn't it, uh, wasn't it kind of the solution to one of the most frequent crashes that we see? On the 32-bit running 32. out of memory? Yeah, that was, that was yeah. definitely one. Um, okay. That, and this will help solve that because Great. we don't butt up against that, that hard cap. Right. Okay. All right, this one is from Randolph Benoit, one of our regulars. Um, so why are we unable to place the Grand Amnesty Edict, so that's uh, one of the bounty pardons that you get, um, into the bank like the Counterfeit Pardon Edict? So that's a great question. Um, this is actually a specific item that is intended to be a reward for, comp I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> <laughs> is it intended to be a reward for completing the, the Thieves Guild um, storyline? So because it's such a special reward, it's intended for that character who completed the whole storyline rather than all your characters being able to use it. And it's really it's powerful. It's really good. Yeah. And, you know, we want to make sure that that one character benefits mm -hmm. from it. Okay, so the next question from Aladir. Why is GemFX, um, it's a graphics enhancer add-on, no longer working properly after the Thieves Guild DLC? Um, we, in general, love seeing all the add-ons that everybody creates, um, but remember that we're not responsible for updating these add-ons since they are 100% player created. Um, we publish the API change nodes as early as we can. Um, it's usually around when a new update hits the PTS, and then that way um, we're giving time for the add-on creators to make any necessary changes that they need to. Um, so in general, if you find that an add-on just isn't functioning properly anymore after one of our updates, um, we recommend that you reach out directly to the add-on author and let them know that something is broken. This is from Tommy, 1979, at war. So with the recent announcement from Chris Char at Microsoft regarding the change of policies which would allow developers to support cross-platform gameplay, I was wondering if it's a feature ZeniMax would consider taking advantage of and supporting in the future of ESL. You're chuckling, Rich. Uh, I'm not <laughs> laughing at the question. And it's, uh, the reason I'm laughing is, is literally the minute that announcement went out, mm -hmm. my inbox just got flooded from everybody internally. <laughs> There's like asking the exact same question, yeah. like, this is really cool, this is awesome, are we gonna do this? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I'm cautiously excited about it. You know, I think it's, it's a really cool idea. Uh, it definitely brings more questions to light than, than answers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, remember, we have multiple console partners, right? We have two, and right. so they both have to embrace and support they this. They have to hug. In order, to, <laughs> in order for this to work for us. Um, and then once we get over that hurdle, we have all kinds of other technical challenges that we have to solve, and they're not insurmountable, but um, they're, the they're big things. It's, yeah, like what happens when there's a name conflict between two accounts? Like how do we resolve that? You right, know, there's, right. there's, there's a whole bunch of, of, of things uh, that go along with that. So um, I guess the... That was kind of the long way of getting around to this, but you know, the short answer is um, we're all really excited about what it could mean. Uh, there's lots of questions that we need to answer before we can even speculate what it means for ESO. Sure. Okay, that's fair. Yep. All right, next question from, oh, I'm just not even gonna try. Say it, say it, do it. Uh, Gert Carell. Ah, that's pretty good. Gert Carell. Gert Carell. <laughs> uh, will ESO make an option to start the 64-bit client with the normal client? Uh, yeah, that is eventually the plan. Uh, we want to work out some of the outstanding bugs with the 64-bit client first, and then we'll make it so it'll launch automatically when you start the game, um, assuming you're 
system is compatible to run that client. Otherwise, it'll open up the 32-bit yep. client. So, so it'll be pretty seamless. Yeah. Yes. And that's the plan eventually. We just got to work out some of the kinks first. Got to get out of beta. This is from Hero of None. Hi, Hero of None. Um, mm -hmm. Vicious death when paired with Proxdet uh, proximity detonation. Proxydet. Proxydet offers a great way for magicka builds to bust up zergs, but what are the options being planned for stamina builds? It's a very good question. Um, we definitely like to give stamina builds more tools like this in the future, including building more stamina specific sets, abilities, and ultimates. For example, one of the changes we have planned for the next update is increasing the effectiveness of the two-handed execute reverse slice against groups. And that's just one part of uh, kind of a longer effort of giving stamina builds more tools. Yep. Next question from Charles. Charles. Um, have you considered either coding into the core game or supplying a separate tool which players can run to gather data which they can submit for analysis? And he wanted to note that credit goes to Selstad for this idea. Um, so we we have a lot of tools that actually already do this. So we have mm -hmm. we collect a lot of really cool data and not just data that is game related. So uh, you know, game related stuff I consider is, you know, ability usage and ability more bias and completed quests and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, in addition to all that stuff, we collect, you know, other really cool data like uh, you know, crashes. Well, I guess crashes aren't cool. We need them, but, but it's good that we um, get that data. We, yeah. we get that data, but you know, you know, crashes across builds and and things like on PC, we know you know the most uh, used add-ons. Mm. What are the most popular mm -hmm. add-ons? You know, we we can track that kind of stuff. Uh, we can do you know keyword searches to see what's trending in game and chat. You know, things like that. Uh, and I actually, because I kind of geek out on this stuff, I, I've got a chart uh, that I want to show some oh people boy. here. Oh boy, numbers. Is that guy riding on top of his bike? He, he, oh. he was. Oh, let's go. He's back. Oh boy. Uh, and so what this what this shows is is the frame rate and latency uh, over the course of, of builds, and and this is just the last the last four. Um, and, and what this shows, or basically how we break this out, is is this is into percentiles. And so that very first column you see is builds, and then the second column you see there is the. Um, Perk 25 average average frame rate, and so what we do with that is that is the lowest 25% of all of the logs that we gather frame rate wise mm -hmm. goes in that bin, and then it's averaged, and then the perk 75 is the highest, and then mid is 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 the remainder, and same thing with the latency. You know, you can see the kind of the low, the medium, and the high, and so we track this over builds, and we can see you know the 2.2. I think it's 11 there. Um, you know, that's kind of what the frame rate was. And then the 2.3.5 is when Thieves Guild launched and we saw a drop <laughs> in frame rate. And when you look at that, it's only like a one frame drop, mm -hmm. but that's averaged over millions of logs. And so there's a problem there. We have to go and kind of dig in and see where it is. Uh, and, you know, if you, you look at this over time and, and across builds, you can see that in general, the frame rate on the lower end machines is a little bit lower. It's a little bit higher on higher end machines or, you know, higher uh, frame rates. And then same thing with the latency where, you know, the people that are experiencing low latency, you know, it's, it's generally about the same or a little bit better. But the people that are at the high end are seeing a little bit higher. And so mm -hmm. we have to use that to kind of help track down where the problems are laying. And to be clear, these numbers are across the entire game. Uh, right. These well, these are these particular the, these particular ones I pulled specifically from North America PC, okay. but we have them across the entire game. We have them just EU. We have them on console, and and uh, it's actually quite interesting to see that uh, when hardware doesn't come into a factor, when there's no difference in hardware, like it's pretty much a bang on. All the averages are across the board the same. Hmm. Um, which is, I mean, I guess is expected, but it's it's interesting to see that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, this is stuff we look at pretty much every day, right? Uh, yeah, I love this stuff. Our live director Joe Burba lives by this stuff, yeah. so uh, yeah, it's 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 really cool. I geek out over this stuff. I apologize for jabbering <laughs> on, but it's Are it's you awesome. Able now. I'm just asking my own personal questions. Ask Were you able to see um, specific areas like? So that that would be the next step. Like this is at a glance stuff, sure. right? Where you know, we see the frame rate or latency goes up or down, and we're like, well, why? And then mm -hmm. that's the first question is why? Mm -hmm. And we start digging into the data and trying to see, like, where is it happening? Is it happening only in Cyrodiil? Is it outside of Cyrodiil? Is it in Boss mm -hmm. Landing? Is it in Wayrest? Like, we can kind of start to go through and, and dissect the problem from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Excellent. Awesome. This question is uh, another one from Hero of None. He's been busy. Yes. <laughs> um, can you verify if the Fighter's Guild passive Slayer is intended to give 10% more damage to players' damage shields if they are a vampire? Um, I've only heard rumors about this, but it doesn't make sense given how elemental resistances and weaknesses don't calculate into a damage shield. You are correct, Hero of None. Um, damage shields don't vary their strength with armor or spell resistance. Slayer specifically gives you more weapon and spell damage, so that doesn't work against vampire with damage shields. So, happy slaying! <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question is from Hella Deron. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> tigers grind to a halt at bridge entrances and small pebbles. Running is slowed down. Rapid maneuvers got nerfed. <coughs> I can't jump to rocks I used to. Has Zoss cast an all-around CC spell over us? Oh. Why? Fix. <laughs> Dare I push my luck in ETA? So oh. <laughs> uh, these are all fair questions, and mm -hmm. we'll touch on each one of these for you. Um, so mounts in general have always slowed down going over certain terrain, um, such as when you're going uphill. Um, but it does appear like it's gotten a little bit worse after this update, so we are investigating and trying to see what's going on there. <coughs> Sorry, I'm having allergy problems today, so <laughs> that's why I'm kind of like that. Um, the movement speed for characters, um, yeah, we've also noticed that that has slowed down, and we are investigating to kind of see what ultimately caused that to happen. So we can fix it. Yes. So we can fix it. So to yeah. the point of running, you know, straight line tests between yeah. areas across builds to see why. Mm -hmm. um, right. Because a lot of the tools say nothing's changed, but that's not actually Clearly the case. We see something. Yeah. something has happened. We're going to dig into it. <laughs> um, for rapid maneuver, uh, we have been reading everybody's feedback on this ability and the changes that were made in Thieves Guild and are sort of in the middle of reviewing everything for that. Um, and then for jumping, there was a change made um, to sort of how jumping works. Um, it was actually a side effect from a bug fix that we made, which was allowing snared players to not be slowed down while they were jumping. Mm -hmm. So uh, this wasn't really intended, and we're looking into making it feel like how jumping used to prior yes. to Thieves Guild. Yep. Yay, jumping. Good questions. Uh, this one is from Wooler. Uh, we've had these endless discussions in our guild about Maelstrom Arena. In the seventh stage, there are these things, things, <laughs> that explode and give you a poison debuff. Are they flowers and plants? Or are they mushrooms? Please help us solve this three-day ongoing debate. Three days. <laughs> Why do I feel the troll in this one? I, maybe. <laughs> so they are called volatile plants. So they are flowers or plants, not mushrooms. Yes. And you're welcome, and we hope you can sleep at night now. <laughs> <laughs> Next question from Poison Paint. Um, I hate to touch on this subject. This is Poison Paint saying this. Um, I hate to touch on this subject, but as it's an important one, with the champion system being the new VR when implemented, it was mentioned that leveling would be slower. Is this the final word, or are things being discussed still? Um, so, I, I don't remember anybody ever saying that leveling would be slower with this change. And if we yeah. did, then it was an error. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got, uh, you're in champion points pretty quickly right now, especially with the catch-up mechanic. And where the cap is at right now, I don't think you actually really start to slow down uh, until you hit around 400, 440. So, um, yeah, like when we raise the cap, that the algorithm is set up so that that number just slides forward. And mm -hmm. so you're just going to earn, you know, the further away from the cap you are, the faster you're in champion points. And that's the way it's always going to be, even when we remove veteran ranks. Great. This one is from Ayrker. <laughs> well, uh, what are the chances of adding more weapon skill lines and associated weapons? What are the chances? I what think we will chances? at some point, mm -hmm. but we have a pretty significant backlog of stuff that we have to get through, you know, bug fixes, you know, tweaking and tuning that I would rather we work on first mm -hmm. before we start adding new stuff in. Okay. That Fair is enough. good. Next question. Guess who? Hero of nine again. Um, <laughs> he had a lot of good questions yeah. this time. What can we <laughs> say? Uh, most monster helm damage works off magic or flame damage. When can we expect... <laughs> Speak. <laughs> when can we expect one to work off physical or poison for stamina builds, putting points into mighty? Um, long term, you 
can expect to see some of the monster mass that will work with Mighty. Mm -hmm. um, and also keep in mind that Moleg Kana adds special or adds um, spell damage and weapon damage. And weapon damage so yeah. it does actually. It's good work for both. both. Yep. Mm. Okay. Boy, I cannot talk today. <laughs> this one's by <laughs> College Instructor. College with an I. Spelled it wrong. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Why is it that when you're in a solo quest, 99% of the chests and other lootable containers are empty? For example, on the Prismatic Core, all of the containers were empty. It makes it seem like other players are able to take the loot out of these and it affects my solo quest. Can you explain why this is? So this, this shouldn't be the case on most quests. In mo some rare cases, such as dream sequences, or if you're going back in time during the quest, the containers will deliberately be empty or inaccessible. But for the most part, solo quests should have just as many interactable objects as other content. So yep. if you find something that isn't going back in time or a dream sequence where all the containers are empty, let us know. And I would be happy to look into it for you. OK, so next question um, from Snoogadooch. <laughs> I can pronounce that one. <laughs> um, can we please get crafting bags early? Oh, and there are yes. a lot of ease Boy. in that. <laughs> I agree. Um, trust me, I, I want this as just as bad as everybody else does. You know, we've been testing it internally for for a little while now. Uh, it's really cool. It's almost too hard for me to go back to live and play on live without them because <laughs> they're so cool. Um, but unfortunately, it's a massive change to the to the UI and how the UI handles items in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have to wait to the the next you know Dark Brotherhood update in order to to get it in. Awesome. So they are still coming then? They are, and they're awesome. And just for anybody who doesn't know, do you want to explain just what crafting a little bit. is and what that means? Sh sure. So I guess sneak peek, we'll call it. Um, <laughs> but but uh, craft bags are for you know ESO Plus members. Mm -hmm. And what they do is any crafting materials you loot in-game will automatically go into your craft bag. So it will remove... Uh, all of the storage space that you have in your inventory uh, and remove the need for you to have a whole bunch of stuff stored in your bank as well. So they're, they're really awesome and they automatically, stuff just automatically goes in there. That's great. Okay. Um, last one from Hero of None. <laughs> By the way, he just mentioned in chat that his wife is going to be having a baby in just a couple oh, days. Oh, wow. So Congratulations. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so uh, the Ebon, Worm, and Hurstein's armor sets were increased to VR16 in the new trial, but not in the new dungeons, or excuse me, not in dungeons in general. Um, will these sets ever be increased in the base game content? So we know everybody really loves these sets, and while we don't have any current plans to increase them to VR16, it is something we could possibly do in the future. And last question for this segment. Um, are there plans to add abilities to our characters that Quen in Thieves Guild has, like climbing walls or fences? A little bit of parkour thing. in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think it would be cool, but it's it's not something that we're going to do. Uh, and the reason being is, you know, when we originally built the world, we built it under the impression and under the assumption that there would be no flying and no parkour. Mm -hmm. And so what that allowed the world builders to do is take a few liberties, you know, optimize things a little bit and build the world a little bit quicker um, by taking a few shortcuts. And so if we were to put that ability in, we'd have to go back and rebuild a lot of those spaces. And, uh, you know, the people that are, you know, already, you know, getting out of the world and sending us videos of, look at this thing, you know, they kind of <laughs> know what I'm not. talking about by the, by the shortcuts. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just not something we, we I want to see Quen take on some of the Skyrim mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Quen is a special snowflake in our game. Yes. Um, well, that wraps up our Ask Us Anything. I don't know if we just want to hang out and watch Kyle. Watch Kyle play. 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 Look, look at that majestic on the, on the camel. On the camel. <laughs> Ooh. Are there any other questions in chat? I actually saw one in passing. Um, somebody was asking about a glitch when oh, you I charge up word. a heavy attack. On I hate console that word. And, um, oh, the heavy attack loop? Yeah, that's something that we're. Oh, is that the animations uh, one? Yeah, yeah, where sometimes uh, under certain frame rate conditions, uh, there's a hitch in there, and so we're, we're tracking that one down. You kind of like swing back, and then you do another there's swing back. There's a pop. Back. Yeah, there's yeah. a pop. Okay. Um, so yeah, we we know. Sorry, I kind of saw that question just in passing. Um, Kyle, you need to play better. 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> he's, he hasn't died yet. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, I didn't even get seen in the, <laughs> in the mansion. Let's see. Do you want to take some questions? Sure. Okay. okay. Why um, not? Yeah, because that kind of wraps up the show. So, yeah. Let's take some questions. Um, oh, you know what? I saw... Sorry, this text is so freaking smooth. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. Um, oh, the group, the yeah, grouping yes. tool fix uh, for if you have a group of four and then you do a random dungeon through the oh, grouping tool, it right. takes forever and it right. seems like you should just be able to go right into it. That, I think, is actually going to be fixed on Tuesday with that incremental patch. I think so. I'm... 90% sure. You're the one that everybody sends patch notes to. I'm pretty sure I saw that one before. <laughs> I know we've we been working upstairs. on it. Yeah. I know we've and been working once on that it, so. gets fixed, there is another side of it where people are reporting that they're queuing up with groups of two or three and it's taking a really long time, even when they have a tank and healer combo. That shouldn't be happening. It doesn't sound right to us. So we're going to see right. if this fix for the full group queuing fixes that. And if it doesn't, then we'll continue digging into why that's happening right. and get it fixed too. Um, let's see, Miss Biz actually had a question. Miss um, Biz. I'm not sure if this is your area, but we'll try. Um, are we supposed to be getting VR 14 Undaunted Bastion and such on our VR 16 characters from Pledge Quests? Uh, right now, that is the way it is designed. Uh, it's something we've talked about that we'd like to fix and improve. So, you know, at some point in the future, maybe. But right now, that's it is nice. working that's as intended. How it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> I see people asking about the Dramothra Sench mount because oh. it was on PTS mm -hmm. and now it's not. And here, we had it in the so video. It yeah. It is coming. It is coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. But Eventually. assistance first. Yes. Which yes. we'll talk about next week. Yeah, we have an article going up um, early next week, kind mm -hmm. of talking about the assistants that are coming to the Crown Store and what makes them <coughs> so cool. Oh. Hey, man. Whoa, flying cats. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and her pig. Whoa. And her little pig. <laughs> <laughs> that pig knows how to go up and downstairs. Oh, somebody asking about Dark Brotherhood. Well, we can tell you it's, it's the next update. See the hand? We will be talking about it. <laughs> Pretty soon, oh, honestly. Yes. You said the S word. Well, <laughs> it's better than the for other us. Ones. It feels like it's right around the corner. So. It, it is. It's so <laughs> soon. It's crazy. Yep. We are already starting to work on material for it, yes. um, for for articles and stuff. Yep. Um. Let's see here. Oh, uh, somebody asking about information about um, ESO for Japan. Um. Tomorrow. I thought we had announced a release date for that. We did. I don't. I, don't. I didn't memorize it off the top of my head. Oh. Towards and the end of date June has been released. Yeah. Me, yeah. It's towards the end of June. Can I Google it? Maybe. <laughs> June twenty third. June twenty third. There you go. There we go. Sorry. June something. Did you just something? pull a live? Let me Google that for you. I, yes, you did. I definitely did. That's <laughs> awesome. I knew we had said it somewhere. I just couldn't remember. <laughs> Oh, there's so many things. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Someone named you want to address the question and now about the scour the city from looking for PvP gifts to impress her. But everything from who? Since you're making it easier for PvP to fair, get PvP, good, for PvP to get PvP stuff, can you make Undaunted easier to get? For, for PvP, PvP players? players. Oh. So, yeah, so, I mean, the merchant is there. Uh, I assume they mean the undaunted skill line and when you look at kind of time across both they're fairly close like you can run undaunted you know do all the achievements and you're pretty close to having everything unlocked mm -hmm. uh, so with a decent group you can go through and, and, and get that pretty quickly um, the changes we made for the pvp skill lines took it from 700 plus hours of pvp to you know a much smaller number i think it's like 130 or something like that hours of pvp uh which is um in my opinion much much more uh sane mm -hmm. <laughs> so gina was just showing me a question about arenas and battlegrounds there's been arenas a lot of people and battlegrounds in chat. it would be a shame to just kind of ignore it. they are being worked on yes I, I think that's probably the most that we can say we are working on them wheeler is at the helm of that yep um it is a thing. It is going to happen. That is, we are that working is, on them. Yes. 
but, but unfortunately, I can't give you know precise release dates for it. That's fair. Um, it's a ways out. Yeah. The um, the European mega servers. Um, somebody was asking, what's the deal with them this week? They've been a it's little been, rocky. <laughs> it's it's been rough, and and uh, you know, it's really because we've been getting DDoSed. Yeah. We're, so we don't we don't make that up. In fact, sometimes <laughs> we even. We get accused of making it up all the time. Yeah, but, and yes. sometimes we, we even avoid saying that we're getting DDoS because people don't believe us right. these days, but um, that is what has been happening this week. Uh, so we've got some mitigations in place though, yes. um, and we spun those up this week. They worked well. Yeah, we it can seems spin like them it's up pretty quickly better. now. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed that hopefully if that happens again, we can get it mitigated much more quickly and you guys can be in play. Um, Text chat for console again. Something else that we have confirmed is mm -hmm. going to be happening, and yep. that we're being worked on. Working on that one. Yep. It's being worked on. Yep. All the designs are complete, and the engineers are working on implementing it now. Awesome! Yay! Uh, let's see. Oh, no, <laughs> Gina needs glasses. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I just, well, look how tiny it is. I mean, uh -huh. um, especially when, when it's you, going by fast. When are you going to release new hairstyles or give us the option to make cosmetic changes to our characters? Oh. The barber shop? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, when that comes out, we're when working on a, a character we're customization shop, and we're working on it. Um, mm -hmm. And when that comes out, all those things will be options. Yes. Don't say no ETA. No. Mm. <laughs> you just um. did. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I see player housing. <laughs> player housing is also something yes, we're working, we're working on. on still. Player housing it is still too. a thing. We are working on it, especially the artists are actively working on it. Um, and also the uh, removal of veteran ranks. Um, we I'm just going to say it's We've said that it's coming in, in Dark Brotherhood. It's yeah. in Dark Brotherhood. Yeah. They're, they're gone come Dark Brotherhood. So. And we're going to have all sorts of articles kind of explaining how that's going to work, what it's going to affect, um, what you can expect from it, and we'll put that out before it's live. Yes. Um, so that way you can kind of prepare and ask any questions ahead of time and we can get everything worked out. Yep, um, we'll have a nice article detailing all that. Oh yeah. Or Raina would like to know if we'll ever get seasonal holidays in ESO. A hyena? Or Raina. I think that's the ESO name. specific <laughs> holidays? <laughs> Uh, it's it's something that's on our list that we'd love to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something coming up. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, a, there's an event coming up that you should keep an eye out for. Well, <laughs> you'll see something on the on yeah. the website. Subtle. It. Mm -hmm. Is it Dingus Day? Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I don't know. You got it in. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great place to wrap up. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us all. It was really nice to be able to answer some questions directly from the chat today. Yeah, yeah. thanks for joining us and uh, watching Kyle play through Thieves Guild. We hope you're enjoying all the content and we'll continue to put out um, incremental patches to address some of the issues that you're running into. And we hope you have a wonderful holiday weekend. We will be back. Uh, April 8th, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, regular time, 4 o'clock. And don't forget, the PC maintenance moved to Tuesday. So we Tuesday will be next online week. on Monday. Uh, so that wraps up this show. Thank you guys Absolutely. for listening Thank you. Thanks Should for they? playing. Thanks for answering so many questions Absolutely. and being here. And we hope you all have fun in Thieves Guild this weekend. Yep. <laughs> Happy Dingus Day. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>